talk about managing individual cameras inside the new hunt control app so of course you'll need to open the app you'll need to go to the cameras tab down here at the bottom as we've already done and you'll see the list of all your cameras now we've already done videos on this page and we've done videos on how to add both map pins and cameras to this list so we're not going to do that in this video instead we're going to talk about cameras that already exist and how to manage those how to do remote control messages and all of those things so we're going to pick a camera we're going to do this uh, north ground blind camera once we open up this page, we're going to see where that camera is located on the map. Of course, we could zoom in to see it even closer compared to our other cameras. As we've talked about previously, the active item, the item we're, we're manipulating, this north ground blind camera, is going to appear orange. All the other icons are going to appear gray. That's going to let you know real quick which one you're working on. We could change the location. We could change the location by either holding our finger down on a map and making the pin move over, or we could grab the pin and move it around. And last but not least, if you know the GPS location, you can click here to enter the GPS location for that camera. So you have a lot of ways you can move it around. The last way you can move it around is actually by clicking this big button at the bottom. This will move the map to your current location, show a blue dot on your current location. You can hold your finger on that blue dot and it'll make this map pin jump over to your current location. We can change the name of the camera. We can make the camera active or deactive if we want to deactivate that camera. And then we can see some of the recent images that have been uploaded from that camera. We can, of course, delete all the images in that camera. If you want to maybe move this camera to a new location, maybe that last location didn't work out well, and you want to move it to a new location or a new property, you could hit this button and delete all the images and all the data that's associated with that camera and start fresh. Or if you need to delete this camera, maybe you had to send it back for support, maybe we replace it under warranty, you can just hit delete camera and it'll remove this camera from your account entirely. So that's all the info on this screen. The last thing we're going to talk about is the remote control menu. And this is something that we're very excited about. So if you see from this camera page, you can click this little gear here to go to the remote control settings. And here's all the options for that camera. So this is a mini camera. The mini camera and the standard camera do have a little bit different looking menu here. So you may see some options on the mini or on the big that are not on the other one. That's okay. That's the way it's supposed to work. They have a slightly different feature set. But you can see all the options I've currently set for that camera. You can see I've got it set on one picture mode. You can select your different burst modes here. You can change motion sensitivity. All these options are changeable. You can add a camera name for the mini cameras. You can select this and add a camera name. Now you are limited to only 12 characters here in the camera name. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're going. You can turn on the time lapse. So on the mini camera, time lapse is going to override your motion sensor. So you're only going to get whatever time lapse you set it on. So if we, if we click this, it's going to tell us what time range do we want to set the time lapse on so you'd want to set that probably in the minutes or hours and the camera will come on and take a picture at that set interval and send you the picture work timers are a little different work timers say the camera only works from this time to this time so we have two work timers you can set so if you wanted a camera to maybe only work at night you would set this first timer to go from midnight to dawn and you would set the second timer to go from sunset to midnight and that would make the camera only work in nighttime hours so that's how you can use that once you've got all of this up here set the way you'd like it to be set you click send to send it to the camera that's going to send a message to the camera depending on your camera check-in setting right here is going to determine how fast it gets that message. So if your camera check-in setting is set on once a day, then the camera is going to get that message when it checks in once a day. It checks in every day, one time, send us a report to let us know how it's doing, and it's going to get this message. Now that time varies from camera to camera. Not every camera is set on the same time. So it may be just a few minutes or it may be up to 24 hours before it gets that message. So that's why we told it once a day. So you'll know within the next 24 hours, it's going to get this command. Alternatively, you could have this set on always available. Now, if you have this set on always available, the camera modem stays on all the time looking for new commands. This is great because it's going to process those commands instantaneously, but it is going to drain your battery. So you probably wouldn't want to do this if you're on AA power, especially if the camera is any distance away from you. You'd really only want to do this if you have a good working solar panel or if you have a backup battery system, a 12 volt battery system. We sell both of those on our website. You could reach out to our support team. If you have any questions with those, we'll be happy to help you figure that out. But depending on what you set here determines how fast it's going to get these remote control commands. The default setting is once a day because that saves you a bunch of battery power. Down here, we have some additional commands. Again, these are going to look different from mini camera to big camera. And you'll probably be seeing some more additional commands popping up in the coming weeks and months as we finalize some of our new upgrades for the cameras. But you're going to see currently these three options, get a picture, camera firmware update, and reset. 
So get a picture, does exactly what it says it does. You send it that command, the next time it checks in, it's gonna send you a picture. Now, of course, this only works really well if you have it set on always available. If you have it set on once a day, you're not gonna get that picture until the camera turns on to send its daily report later in the day. The camera firmware update operates very similar to the get a picture. It's going to process that command based on what you set above. So if you set it on always available, then it's going to go ahead and start that firmware update immediately. If you set it on once a day, it's not going to start it until it sends a daily report. Importantly, if you do click camera firmware update, it is only going to run that command if you have enough battery power to do so. So if the camera turns on and says, oh, I have less than 50% battery power, it's not going to run that command. So you need to go change the batteries out in that camera. Reset changes all of the settings on your camera back to the factory defaults. So if you click reset, anything that you've changed up here is going to change back to the factory defaults. Now in the coming weeks, you're gonna see another section on this page that is actually going to let you know what settings your camera currently has. The camera is going to send a report once a day and we're gonna take that report and tell you here's what settings are currently on your camera. So if you change something at the camera, it's gonna update this system for you. That'll be coming out very soon. This is a brief overview of the remote control settings. Of course, if you have any questions or need help with any of this, feel free to reach out to our support staff. We'd love to talk to you and discuss this with you. We hope that you're enjoying the app. We hope that this is working out well for you and we just hope you have the best of luck this season.